let's look upon the our next topic which is pollutants pollutant as mentioned earlier pollutant is a substance or energy introduced into the environment that has undesirable effects or that adversely affects the usefulness of a resource a pollutant may cause long term or short term damage by changing the growth rate of plant or animal species or by interfering with human amenities comfort health or property values types of pollutants let's see what are the types of pollutants number 1 is soil pollutants number 2 is air pollutants number 3 is water pollutants number 4 is noise pollutants okay examples copper zinc mercury pesticides etc okay air pollutants or example ki hua? Gen uh, okay solid waste oh sorry okay carbon monoxide Okay. Nitrogen oxide, etc. Water pollutants, example. Mercury, nitrates, phosphorus, etc. Noise pollutants. More noise pollutants example sounds generated by trains boats loud music vehicle etc okay so these are the types of pollutants now let's have a look upon the different types of waste okay different types of waste can be solid waste liquid waste gaseous waste and hazardous waste solid waste are any discarded or abandoned materials in so solid form okay examples can be scrap uh, metal latex paint uh, okay waste tire uh, latex paints furniture and toys appliances and vehicles empty aerosol cans paint cans and compressed gas cylinders these are the examples of solid waste okay now let's see solid waste management the solid waste management in involves disposal of solid waste to land or ocean or recovering and reproducing useful substances from the waste through recycling the entire methodology of solid waste management is based on collection of waste disposal and resource recovery okay now let's look upon the second one which is liquid waste uh, waste can come in non-solid form as well uh, some solid waste can also be converted to a liquid waste form for disposal it includes point and non-point source discharges such as storm waste and uh, waste water examples of liquid waste include waste water from homes liquids used for cleaning in industries and waste detergents sources of liquid waste can be manure waste oil waste water okay so what are the treatments let's see first one is dilution in this method the liquid waste is subjected to perfect 
dilution so that the dissolved oxygen in uh, oxygen in natural water decomposes the organic waste completely thereby reducing the turbidity the reduction of turbidity favors easier penetration of sunlight and natural ecosystem is restored mechanical treatment the liquid waste is allowed to pass through different screens filters grid chambers sedimentation basins etc okay third is biological treatment in this method the liquid waste is passed through trickling filters where aerobic bacteria degrades the bio particles as they seeps through large vat beds filled with cross stones covered with bacterial growth okay gaseous waste gaseous waste is a waste product in the form of gas resulting from various human activities such as manufacturing processing material consumption or biological processes the gaseous waste management the gaseous waste are generated into the environment mainly due to anthropogenic activities the gaseous waste include carbon dioxide methane chlorofluorocarbon oxides of nitrogen carbon monoxide oxides of sulfur etc these gaseous waste can cause serious environment hazards therefore it is highly essential to take appropriate steps for the proper management and control of gaseous waste in the environment some important measures are described below the gaseous pollutants like so2 h2s nh3 etc can be removed by absorption in using appropriate liquid uh, wet scrubbers the use of smokeless chulas solar cookers etc the industry should use precipitators scrubbers and filters to check production of particulate matter there should be large scale plan, uh, plantation which will reduce co2 level and increase o2 level of atmosphere the emission of hydrocarbon from vehicle can be checked by the use of unleaded petrol the automobile emission can be controlled by control of exhaust emission control of evaporation emission control of crank case emission use of cng instead of diesel okay number 4 is hazardous waste hazardous or harmful waste are those that potentially threaten public health or the environment such waste could be inflammable can easily catch fire reactive can easily explode corrosive that is can easily eat through metal or toxic that is poisonous to human beings and animals okay in many countries it is required by law to involve the appropriate authority to supervise the disposal of such hazardous waste example include uh, old fire extinguishers old propane tanks pesticides mercury containing equipment example thermostats and lamps like fluorescent bulbs and batteries okay so these are the types of wastes and we have learned about the waste management as well now let's look upon the energy conservation okay energy conservation energy convers uh, sorry energy con conservation refers to reducing energy consumption through various means energy conservation differs from efficient energy use which refers to using energy economically for maximum effect for example driving less is an example of energy conservation driving the same amount with a higher mileage vehicle is an example of energy efficiency energy conservation and efficiency are both energy reduction techniques okay environmental benefits of energy con con conservations can be number one is reduced surface and ground water pollution number two is reduction in land and wildlife disruption okay number 3 is fewer opportunities for oil spills during transportation so these are the benefits of the environment due to energy conservation now let's look upon the 3 r's okay the 3 r's that is reduce reuse and recycle reduce uh, that is the best way to manage waste is not to produce it reduce means the best way to manage waste is not to produce it this can be done by shopping carefully and being aware of a few guidelines for example buy products in bulks 
larger economy size products or ones in concentrated form use less packaging and usually uh, okay um or ones in concentrated form use less packaging and usually cost less per kilogram avoid over packaged goods especially ones packed with several materials such as foil paper plastic they are difficult to recycle plus you may pay more for the package avoid disposable goods such as paper plates cups napkin razor and lighters etc buy durable goods ones that are well built or that carry good warranties at work make two sided copies whenever possible to reduce the paper wastage maintain central files rather than using uh, several files for individuals use electronic mail or main bulletin board use cloth napkins instead of paper napkins use a dish cloth instead of paper towels okay number 2 is reuse reuse means it makes economic and environmental sense to reuse products sometimes it takes creativity reuse products for the same purpose uh, say paper and plastic bags and repair broken appliances furniture and toys reuse products in different ways use plastic microwave dinner trays as picnic dishes sell old clothes appliances toys and furniture or donate them to charities okay use reusable containers rather than plastic wraps use a ceramic coffee mug instead of paper cups reuse grocery bags or bring your own cloth bags to the store do not take a bag from the store unless you need one okay number 3 is recycle recycling involves taking a used material and processing uh, remanufacturing and selling it as a new product begin recycling at home and at work buy products made from recycled material look for a recycling symbol or ask uh, store managers or salesmen check collection centers and curbside pickup services to see what they uh, accept and begin collecting those materials these can include metal cans newspapers paper products glass plastics and oil okay speak to the store manager and ask for products and packaging that help cut down on waste such as recycled products and products that are not over packaged use recycled paper for letterhead copier paper and newsletters okay so these are the three r's that we can use to save the environment okay now there are different types of hazards and uh depletions you can say hazards and depletions like climate change etc in the environment let's look upon them number one is global warming the first one is global warming the biggest challenge faced by the world is global warming okay though there are different definitions of global warming it is usually defined as the increase of earth's average surface temperature due to effect of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide uh, no, sorry carbon di okay greenhouse gases ki ki hoy carbon dioxide emissions from burning fossil fuels or from deforestation which trap heat that would otherwise escape from earth this is a type of greenhouse effect what are the greenhouse gases the most significant greenhouse gas is actually water vapor not something produced directly by human kind in significant amount however even slight increase in atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide can cause a substantial increase in temperature okay climate change most of the scientific community represented especially by the intergovernmental panel on climate change now believes that the global warming effect is real following are the impacts of global warming rising seas in a uh, okay sorry rising seas changes in rainfall patterns increased likelihood of extreme events such as flooding hurricanes etc melting of ice caps melting glaciers extinction of uh, white uh, that is uh, vanishing of animal populations that is extinction spread of diseases bleaching of coral reefs due to warming season acidification due to carbonic acid formation loss of plankton due to warming seas okay 
second is ozone layer depletion planet earth has its own natural sunscreen ami jene ke gut sunscreen ho ho to protect ourselves from the sun jene ke amar earth heu eta natural sunscreen ase that shields us from the sun's damaging ultraviolet radiation it's called the ozone layer a fragile band of gases beginning 15 kilometers above our planet are reaching up to the 40 kilometers human activities have caused a substantial thinning of this protective covering not only over the north and south poles but right over our heads okay stopping ozone layer depletion is one of the major challenges faced by the world today the ozone depletion process begins with cfcs and other ozone depleting substances okay that are emitted into the atmosphere number 1 wind uh, efficiently mix the troposphere and evenly distribute the gases number 2 strong uv light breaks the ods molecule apart number 3 it is these atoms that uh, these means um, okay let me explain strong uv light breaks the ods molecule apart cfcs hcfcs carbon uh, tetrachloride methyl chloroform and other gases release chlorine atoms and halons and methyl bromide release bromine atoms so these atoms that uh, these are the atoms that actually destroy ozone okay not the intact ods molecule it is estimated that one chlorine atom can destroy over 100000 ozone molecules before it is removed from the stratosphere since ozone filters out harmful uv radiation less ozone means higher uv uh, radiation levels at the surface the more the depletion the larger the increase in incoming uv rays uv rays can cause skin cancer cataract damage to materials like plastic and harm to certain crops and marine organisms although some uv rays reach the surface even without ozone depletion it is its harmful effects will increase as a result of the problem okay now let's see the ground water hydrological cycle the water cycle also known as the hydrological cycle or the h2o cycle describes the continuous movement of water on above or below the surface of the earth the water cycle in, uh, involves the exchange of energy which leads to temperature changes for instance when water evaporates it takes up energy from its surroundings and cools the environment when it condenses it releases energy and warms the environment these heat exchanges influence climate so the water cycle is also essential for the maintenance of life and ecosystems on the planet so it is a essential part of the ecosystem let's see now ground and surface water ground water is the water located beneath the earth surface in soil pore spaces and in the fractures of rock formations okay typically ground water is thought as uh, thought of as water flowing through shallow aquifers but in the technical sense it can also contain soil moisture permafrost frozen soil immobile water in very low permeability bedrock and uh, deep geothermal and oil formation water okay number 2 is surface water surface water is the water present on the surface of the planet such as in streams rivers lakes wetlands or oceans now let's see the treatment of water water treatment is collectively the industrial scale processes that makes water more acceptable for an end user which may be drinking industry or medicine water treatment is like small scale water sterilization that campers and other people in wilderness areas practice water treatment should remove existing water contaminants or so reduce their concentration that the water becomes fit fit for uh, its desired end use which may be safely returning used water to the environment okay processes for drinking water treatment pre chlorination aeration coagulation coagulate uh, con uh, sorry coagulant aids also known as uh, also known as poly electrolyte to improve coagulation and for thicker flock formation sedimentation filtration 
desalination uh, disinfection okay so these are the processes uh, involved in the treatment of drinking water now let's see the conservation and harvesting of water water con uh, conservation there are several uh, several important things that conservationists do to save water these are reducing wa uh, water waste protecting the clean water we have if water is polluted by harmful chemicals or garbage we can't use it for drinking uh, bathing or watering crops okay using water management plans ensure that we use water efficiently encouraging companies to make devices that do not use as much water as they did before so these are the important things that conservationists do to save water water harvesting means capturing rain where it falls or capturing the runoff in your village or town and taking measures to keep that water clean by not allowing pollution or activities which can pollute the water ways of water harvesting and conservation can be using rain water efficiently reducing water demand taking measures to avoid runoff planning your irrigation recharge of wells uh, means these are casting tubes drilled into the underlying bedrock enhancing the infiltration of runoff water to the groundwater level so we have learned about the different types of pollutions different types of uh, Uh, depletions and also the treatments okay now let's see the right attitude towards the environment increased rate of construction pollution and land erosion can cause problems for life on earth water pollution can cause a shortage of drinking water or diseases which may plague the mankind forever environment education is crucially needed to prepare students who would play an important role in protecting the environment the main objective of environment education is making the people aware about the surroundings in which they are living so an additional goal is to make all people more sensitive about environment and environmental protection by helping them to develop positive attitude about the environment so that's why we are learning about the environment and environmental pollutions and their treatments okay in house environment maintenance some things we can do to avoid uh, environmental pollution is switching off all gadgets lights fans when not in use maintain the right temperature in winters and summers these days most people use the air conditions in summer and heater in winters so we can maintain that as well install fluorescent lights use tube lights and compact fluorescent lights can uh using these can lower your electricity bill by at least 30% as compared to ordinary bulbs okay wash using warm water instead the instead of heating the water to the boiling point try using warm water since it consumes less electricity don't waste paper clean your refrigerator your fridge uses a lot of energy to keep your food cold uh ensure that you get the condenser coils cleaned regularly also ensure that you maintain the right temperature use rechargeable batteries don't use plastic bags so these are the things which can be done by us to these are small steps actually which can be done in our home as well in our office in our working place as well to ensure that we do not pollute the environment and we save it for our mankind so uh, with this we come to the end of this chapter next we will be learning about uh labor welfare legislation most probably or let me see just a minute okay no we will be yes we will be learning about the labor welfare legislation in the next chapter so till then keep learning and subscribe to our channel and also share it so that everyone can learn